Right now, we are being bombarded with corona information advising self-isolation and social distancing. This is coming from everywhere, from presidential debriefs to news stories and articles. It's even showing up in kids' TV shows and late-night television. The Rona is spreading. This is no joke. It's no time to work or roam. The way you can fight it is simple, my friends. Just stay the at home. Even though social distancing and self-isolation are extremely critical at this time, it can have impacts on one's mental and emotional health. During this time of quarantine, I've heard cabin fever used a lot and very casually. This made me curious, is cabin fever a real risk of self-isolation, or is it just another synonym for boredom? Is this a recognized diagnosis with real symptoms and side effects, or is it just a clickbait term used by companies and journalists? The first thing I wanted to know was if cabin fever was even real. Is it a disease? Is it a disorder? It turns out it depends on who you ask. Some medical professionals say yes, it is a disease based off the mental and physical toll isolation can have on someone. Whereas some say no to being a disorder or a disease because it's not in the DSM-5. The DSM-5 is a book created by hundreds of mental health experts to help define and classify disorders. As of now, professionals in the medical community can at least agree that cabin fever is a syndrome because it's a condition that is characterized by a specific set of symptoms. Symptoms of cabin fever overlap with symptoms of mood disorders like depression and seasonal affective disorder. Even though some symptoms may be easy to observe, it's important to remember that a diagnosis can only come from a medical professional. If you are feeling stuck while inside, there are a few things that may help. Going out for walks or exercising can help mentally and physically, and the CDC has even created a guide with protocol on how to exercise while social distancing. Using your brain and doing activities like reading a book or solving puzzles when taking a break from mindless activities can also help, along with creating personal goals and maintaining healthy eating habits. Lastly, seek out help if you need it. There are several online resources and virtual therapists ready and willing to work with you during this hard time. 